Yo, welcome back. So we are back at work, back from Budapest. Nice little four day city break. I'm pretty burnt out though, because even though it was a city break, I did a lot of walking around, seeing all the different things, getting taxis and stuff, and eating loads of food. So yeah, I'm pretty stuffed. And I've got a little bit ill from the plane, so I recovered and then I'm back ill again, but it's all right. So I've had an extra half an hour in bed this morning. It's half eight. Let's quickly go to the shop, maybe get a Mackie D's coffee on the way and then let's head over to the job. But today we're installing the fancy LED strip at that big job that I showed you when I did the second fix on the utility. But I've made a boo-boo and I think I can rescue it. This boo-boo I've made is entirely 100% my fault for lack of knowledge and never doing RGB W or RGB LED strip before. I've only ever done like your normal 3000 or 4000K, just your standard, LED strips, but yeah, well, I'll go into more detail when we get there, and whoops, someone might have uh, took a little detour to McDonald's, but don't know who that was. But yeah, anyway, been to the shop, got this, and you don't even want to know how much I just paid for this plastic box, just because it's got the name Jesus or Genesis, or however you say it. But yeah, I need a massive box to fit the driver in. This is probably a little bit overkill, but I'd rather have enough room for absolutely everything. And at the end of the day, it's going in that like back cupboard bit. So yeah, I'm gonna quickly eat this McDonald's and we'll hop over to the job and I'll run through exactly what I've done wrong. And then you can all shout at me in the comments. But at the end of the day, I've never done it before. I thought I knew, I didn't know. Looking back at it, I probably should have looked into it a bit more, but you learn from mistakes at the end of the day. We're here, we're at the job, we're unloaded, got the steps, materials in. We'll run through that in a minute, but I'll just run you through this job. Now it's all been plastered, the windows are in, and it's all tight and secure. So windows are in, really nice. The lantern's on. I see we're fitting the LED strip around there. All the walls are plastered, really nice plastering to be fair. All my boxes are accessible, no chipping out to do, which is what we like to see. Obviously it's a family friend anyway, so he's done a real good job. And then, Last time we were here, we were in the utility, fitting these lights and second fixing. So this is all still on. This side is all still dead. This feed that the switches, but everything obviously hanging out is all dead. I've emptied the box out. This is all the goods we're fitting today. So we've got, I'll give you a bit of background on this. I've, this is where I've made the boo-boo. So obviously before with Nick in kitchens, I've only ever done like your standard white or warm white LED strip, which obviously only has on the terminations, positive and negative, which is obviously 12 volt or 24 volt, depending on which one. However, there's different variations. So if you want color changing stuff, you can have RGB, which is color changing, or you can have RGBW, which is color changing and white. So I've gone for this option here, and obviously that's gonna be surrounding that LED lantern. And this is where you need the five core cable, where I've only ran in two core because I, thought it would just be the same thing. I just thought it'd be a transformer or something at the end, something different, but no. So I've made a boo-boo. I've only ran in a two core cable, which then normally you'd have to, well, make a mess and try and pull it through the plaster. But luckily, very luckily, I future-proofed this job and ran a one mil in for in the future if they ever wanted to get rid of the LED strip, which I don't see anyone doing, but I just ran it in as a future thing, which has saved my bacon, really. This one mil, I ran in if they ever wanted 230 lights up there. So technically it's not ideal, but I've got the three cores in the one mil. So I've got live neutral earth, and then I've got the black and the red. So I can use that. Obviously this is only 12 volt or 24 volt. So it's all low voltage. So there's nothing wrong with this, but obviously it's just not ideal. But Hey ho, you learn from your mistakes at the end of the day and at the end of the day, it's still gonna work and it's not gonna affect the customer in one way whatsoever. So a brief overview of what we've got over there is we've got the box, which is gonna house the transformer. So we've got a feed cable in, which is going into the transformer and then out of that into the LED receiver and then from the LED receiver is gonna be the cables, which are here, which are gonna be connected onto the RGB strip. And then a bit different, we've got all the different connection style. I wasn't aware of all this, so you've got these nice pre-made corners. So we've got loads of those. And then kindly they sent out these here, which are the through crimps. So you don't have to mess around soldering. You just clip them on and snap them on. A bit like Wagos, but it's for LED strips. So I've never seen them before. They look really nice. And then we have got 
these as well, which are like the, so this is commonly what you'd men have run in, the five core cable with the different colors. And then we also have some of this LED profile. So fingers crossed, this is the slimmest one they do, that that will fit along there nicely and you won't be able to see it, but we won't know until we get up there. Right, let's have a look up here then. Oh, so that's quite nice really. We've got a plastered finished reveal up here. So obviously we're gonna sit the aluminium trim on here. Another cool thing as well, that actually acts as a heat shrink for the LED tapes. So then you'll see it's lower heat. And then what I've just done, I've pushed in all this slack here, just back into the cavity. So then worst case scenario, rather than just cutting it off and wasting it, I may as well push the slack in. And then if you ever need a bit more slack or I don't know, do you wanna reconfigure this, then they've got more slack to do so. So technically I could try and tape this on like a five core cable and try and pull it through, but there's about six different joists to go through here. And then there's a load of pipes where it goes through. So like waste pipes. So it's not gonna pull and I'm not even gonna risk it where here I've got five cores that will work. It's just gonna be, that side it's gonna be fine. And most commonly what I'm worried about, but then I've spoke to a load of different sparks just to reassure me is the whole thing of, in like single installation on show, but then realistically it's 12 volt and 24 volt, so it's fine. But I've made the executive decision of this trim, when you have it like that, sitting flush, obviously that would be a really nice finish. The only downside is nothing to do with the trim, just the way it works. You can see it from here, because obviously that lip isn't the biggest. Cut that plaster, because that's just plasterboard under there, and sit that in that groove so it's fully hidden and super dusty, but we're getting there. So I've cut out this channel, gone so far, and then I'm gonna clean it out, hoover it. And uh, obviously this is gonna be all painted white, so it'll all blend in. And then uh, the recessed aluminium strip will sit down in that groove, perfect. Well, fingers crossed, I've not tried it yet. Just went and got a COVID mask, found some of these in the van, save uh, eating all the dust up. And that's it, so I've cut it out, cleaned out the trim, hoovered it out and you can see a little bit there the beading but I'll get some filler and sort that out but realistically once this is all painted white it'll all blend in and you can't see it from down there it's only because we're balancing off the top of the steps I mean if half and safety are watching we're definitely not balancing on the top step but it's fine and then this is sitting in there nice and flush so now you can't see it you'll just see the glow up the wall so tedious job going all the way around now cutting out the rest Right, we're a lot further on in the day and I'm a lot dustier and I can barely breathe because I've ate a lot of dust cutting out all up here. So we've got the channel cut out all the way around, all the way around into that corner. So that's one messy job done. On to the next stage now. So channel's all cut out. I need to decide what I'm doing with the LED trim, whether I'm gonna 45 mitre the corners which is gonna be hard, to be fair, to get it without snapping. So I might just not 45 the corners and put them up next to each other. And then JCC have supplied, I never even knew these were a thing. So it was great speaking to JCC in their technical department and using their online configurator. So I'll put that on the screen now. JCC has like an online configurator so you can customize exactly what you want to your needs, obviously here. I didn't know it was a thing until after speaking to Danny at JCC and then he said, why didn't you just use our configurator and you could have had, like, I could have had recessed in beads and I could have had everything pretty much set up and ready and he would have made me aware of the five, needing five core. So it would have got me out of all this hassle, but at the end of the day, you don't know that until you made these mistakes and you learn. Everyone's learning at the end of the day. If you, did, if you would say you know everything, then yeah, you just big headed. But moving back onto the products. So there's these corners, manufactured corners, which come with the like Wago pushing connectors, which I was taught telling you about. So this strip here, for example, obviously the RGBW5, five, RGBW is a lot more rigid as well to, to your normal stuff. Let me just move that. So trying to bend it around the corners, obviously I'm on my flat bit here and then trying to bend it. I've seen some Americans do something where like you push it back one and then do something like that but it just doesn't look the best and it's gonna be a faff and it's gonna damage the LEDs, so I'm not gonna do that. Finally made my mind up. I've set up a little station here just for cutting so it catches all the little metal filings off the aluminium profile. Got a little bit, got some little wood screws there. 
I'm just going to drill, I don't know, four along here. It doesn't need loads because obviously it's supported anyway. It's nice and tight cut. So just four little drill holes on the back of this section. And then I've made, made, I can't speak today, made my mind up. I'm going to not fortify the corners with the aluminium profile. I'm just going to butt them up. So say that's the one edge, just butt it straight up like that in the corners and then get one of those elbows and obviously fit it like so, like that. All right, let's try not to drill through the matting, eh? This is the trim up here. I've not screwed it down yet, but we're nearly getting there. I'll just show you the corners. So we've got these nice clean corners. The trim's now flush, you can't see it. Obviously, once this is all painted, it'll all blend in. All the trunking's now mounted. I've had a look in this corner and chiseled out a bit more plaster. It's not ideal, obviously, yes, I did mess up running the wrong cable, but ultimately to save all of this fresh plaster, the only way I can see this possible is to do what I'm about to suggest. Yes, it's not ideal, but everyone's gonna comment saying, oh, you've got singles exposed, da, 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 da. No, you can't get your fingers into it because the trunking lid's gonna cover it. And also it's low voltage, it's 12 volts, so there's no regs to that. So there's nothing wrong with it technically, it's just not the normal way I'd do it, but scenario, I've got to make it work. And this is going to save the customer the damage. So obviously I've just got to mount this last piece. And then this is what I'm thinking, put Wagos in the corner down there. So if you see it's well within the trunking, obviously once this lid's on in this corner, you won't be able to see that or get your fingers to it. And it's still accessible because you can take the trunking lid off to maintain the LED strips and then anyone with brain cells would see that way it goes. So I think overall, obviously it's not too bad. I managed to get it to work. The way it goes will work absolutely mint. I just need to fold these ones back and measure the first length of strip. It's hard to show you, but we're getting there. So the LEDs stuck within the profile using the 3M sticky back tape, which is on the back. So that's stuck all the way around. We're just on to, Oh God, the unit light's a bit too bright. We're just onto the last little corner here, this last little bit. I've taken that box apart and I've laid everything out, unscrewed it, and I'm gonna run you through exactly what's what. So it all makes sense and it'll be nice and easy once I've explained this for any follow Sparkies that wanna do this and they've never done RGB or just strip lighting in general. So as a generic rule of form, you have your 230 in. So I'll have a one mil going into this box, which is then gonna be wired straight into here. So you'll have your live and your neutral. The earth, you just leave coiled in here. All 12 volt or 24 volt stuff doesn't require an earth. So you just leave that in there. This side, we've got the obviously the output. So it's either 12 or 24 volt. I need to actually look what this one is. 24 volt, this one is. So you'll have your plus and your minus. We have see negative and positive. And then from that, we're going straight into a receiver, which this is for just literally the handheld remote to control the LED strip. So this is power in as such. And then your output side is normally your five core cable, but in our scenario, it's the twin and earth. So the live neutral earth, and then the red and black from the two core cable, which I've ran in. So luckily I've managed to make it work. And you obviously wire that in, in the corresponding colors. Yes, I'm aware this driver is overkill and this box is a bit overkill, but that's just the one I opted for. I'd rather fit a bigger driver now, and then at least I've got it. So. I'll mount all this up nice in there and then get this in there as well somewhere and I'll cut out the little square of where it's coming through, mark it up on the wall, get some fixings, get it fixed to the wall and fingers crossed we'll be on and working and having a disco soon. We've mounted the box up there, cut the box out, got loads of screws all the way around, that's sufficient. Nicely done actually, the builders apply lined all of this utility like just the area so everyone can just screw their clips screw all their surface mounted stuff onto it. Ran out of one mil when I did this, so it's free core. So what I've done is I've cut one of the cores off, the black core as you can see, wired in brown, wired in gray as neutral, sleeved it up blue, put some earth leaving on, doubled it over, took it out the enclosure. And then this side we've got red as positive, black as negative, and that's going into the driver. So let me put this up here out of the way. I need to put them lids on and screw that back, but I just wanted to show you, you guys. So we've got power going into the driver now. So this is for the remote. And then going out, obviously, we've got the five colors now. So this is the input, output, sorry, to the tape. So we've got V plus as black, red as red. And then we put green as the earth in the one mil here. I just need to cut it and wire it up. 
blue, blue as obviously the blue in here, and then white as the brown. Sorry, it's a bit dark, but you'll understand why in a second. We're all on, we're all working, paired up the remote, nice and easy, literally just, as soon as you get power to the supply, just press and hold the power button on the remote, it flashes three times white, and that's it, you're all paired. There's that many different settings on this remote, it looks like I'm in a nightclub. But look how good this looks. I've not put the trims on yet, so obviously you're still getting a glare of the LEDs through the glass, but I'm gonna do that tomorrow. But look how cool that looks. Color changing, or like you say, you can just have it white all the way around, and you can't actually see the light, it's more of just a glow effect. That's me done for today. Going to go to some emails, go and see Nick, do some certificates and uh, have a catch up with Nick. So thanks for watching. Catch the next one. Bye.